Okay, welcome. In this video, we are going to answer and ask the question, what to do? Well, what to do about what? Well, what to do about your bond portfolio in a rising interest rate environment? Because everybody has this breakdown in some capacity, regardless of how much money you have, how old you are. We all have risk money and we have safe money. The risk money, this is where we have stocks, we have equity, mutual funds, we have real estate, and we have commodities. On the safe side, this is where we have CDs, we have annuities, and then we have bonds. But here's the problem. In a rising interest rate environment, you know, we know this. This is axiomatic. If interest rates go up, bond values go down. Now, if this is new to you, go watch the video, Bond Basics. I go into great detail of how bonds work and why this little picture here is the way it is. And when you look at the, the risk and the safe money side, if I were to say to you, hey, if we can get you 3 to 5% return, something reasonable, 3 to 5%, with no downside, meaning you're, you can't lose anything on the downside, would you like that kind of investment for your safe money? Most people would say yes. Let me ask you this question a different way. If you ever bought a bond or a bond mutual fund, a bond fund, and notice where I'm putting bond fund, I'm putting it on the risk side. If you bought a bond fund, would you be looking for 20 plus percent returns? Well, the answer is no. Nobody is ever expecting to get that kind of return out of their bonds. They're looking for something safe and something reasonable and they don't want to lose money. See, what happened is in the 80s, it was very popular to own bond funds. There was one mutual fund company that had a, a guaranteed, I'm sorry, it's, they had a government that was the name of it, Government Guaranteed Bond Fund. Okay, Now, it was a bond fund where different people put their money in. So a person had 10000 another person had 50000 another person had a half a million, and so forth. All these people put the money in, and the manager went and they bought Government Guaranteed Bonds inside the mutual fund. So they were buying Treasury bonds, and they are mainly buying Jenny Mays uh, that were you know government mortgage bonds. And so here's what happened. In the mid-'80s, you know, the... Uh, bond interest rates were coming down and then in the mid 80s they kind of spiked up and what happened is remember interest rates go up bond values go down people that owned this bond fund they got their statement and they saw their statement was way down in value and they said wait a minute I thought this was a government guaranteed investment no 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 it's a mutual fund that was buying government guaranteed bonds so the person panicked they bought you know, they looked at their statement. Now, let's just clarify. And again, we covered this in bond basics. If you own a one-year bond, whatever you put in, assuming that the company or government entity is still solvent, after one year, you get your money out. If you put it in for five years, after five years, you get your money out. If you put it in for 10 years, after 10 years, you get your money out. And the bond value fluctuates. The longer the maturity, the more the fluctuation and then actually as it gets closer to maturity, it, 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 the fluctuation decreases. But here's what happened. This person got their statement during one of these periods. Okay, They got frustrated. They called the manager and they said, I want my money out. Now, the manager has to liquidate holdings in order to get the money out. So that means they had to sell there, which solidified the loss. Remember, if you hold a bond to maturity, you're going to get your money back. But the manager couldn't hold it to maturity because they had to sell it in order for the person to get money out. They solidified this loss. That meant another person got their statement and the bond value went down. And everything just kept going down and down and down. Folks, in 27 years that I've been in the business, I've seen people lose just as much money in bond funds, mutual funds, as I have seen them lose money in individual stocks or equity mutual funds. Okay, so what to do in a, in a rising interest rate environment. So let's just take a look here at the 10-year treasury. I want to show what's happened year to date. So this is 10-year treasury. Now look at this. May 
the 10 year treasury is hovering around the one and a half to 1.6 period. And then here we are today. This is live. This is August 12, 2013. The, the 10 year treasury is up around 260. That's a, that's a 100 base points. That's a full percent. A full percent. So remember, interest rates go up, bond values go down. People have lost money in bonds just in the past two and a half, three months. Let's look at the bigger picture here. As you can see, the overall trend the last five years, interest rates have come down. But let's, let's let's look at let's look at this. Let's take a look at the bull market. Interest rates were high, and they started coming down in the early '80s. Look at this trend line. This now, if you were to own a stock and you were to reverse this, this would be a pretty good stock to own. That over time went low to high. If you were shorting a stock, this would be a pretty good thing because you could short it and you make money on the short side. This is a, you are looking at a picture of a bond bull market. Overall trend is down. Now, remember, this is what I was talking about in that illustrating about the bond mutual fund where people lost. This is where I was talking about this area here where bond, bond uh, interest rates spiked up and a bunch of people lost money because they panicked. But this overall, this is a bond bull market. Well, if, if we are at this point, and we can really only go up from here, that means we are entering a bond, what? A bond bear market, right? So, if since the early 80s, interest rates have done this, and this is the bond bull market, and interest rates start going up, that means we're gonna be on a bond bear market, right? So, back to our question what to do in a rising interest rate environment. If we're trying to get three to five percent, that's great. That's what most people would be looking to get in a in out of a bond. But here's the problem. If you're gonna get that out of a bond, you have this enormous downside risk. So how do we do that? Well we do that through the index annuity. We do that through the index annuity. So the index annuity caps are between four and a half and five percent right now now if you want to understand how the index annuity works overall then go to and watch the video option pricing who took my upside who took my upside and I go through how exactly an index annuity works so you can understand this but go watch that if, if this doesn't make sense what we're saying here on the S&P 500 to so our caps so it is the cap on an annual point to point on the S&P 500 what this let's just keep it simple let's say the cap is 5% if the S&P goes up 8 do we get 8 no we don't get 8 we get 5 so if we put our money in right here whether let's say a person puts in $100,000 our 100,000 absolutely guaranteed can't go down that's the way an index annuity works What's happening is we are getting an interest credit on this hundred thousand. That's what gets us the cap. So let's say the S&P goes up eight. It goes up eight. We don't get eight. We get five. Okay. So we just got our five. The next year the market is soft. It only goes up two. Do we get two? Yep. We get two because two is less than five. The next year, sure enough, the S&P is down twelve. What happens? We move sideways. We don't go down on this negative twelve because it's an option. It expires worthless. We go sideways. So we put our hundred thousand dollars in. That's guaranteed. Now it's one hundred five. That's guaranteed. It went up two. So let's say it's one hundred seven and change. That's guaranteed. The market goes down twelve. We're still one hundred seven. Let's say the next year the market goes up five. Do we get all five? Yep. The cap is five. So do we start from this point? No. We start from this point. So we go up five from there. So back to my question: If we could get you a three to a five percent return with no downside, absolutely guarantee it, would you like that for your safe money bond alternative? And that's the point of this video, what to do. What I'm saying is that bonds are not gonna work over the next time period. And to, from here we are, you know, mid to late 2013, Bernanke and the Federal Reserve saying that interest rates are gonna be going up over time. So look, I don't have a crystal ball, I don't know if the interest rates are start going, to, going to start going up in 14 or they're going to go up in 15. I don't know if we're going to be another Japan where we have low interest rates for a really long time, but it seems that the overall logic is the interest rates are going to go up, and I don't know how high, I don't know what the ceiling is going to be, but my point is 
that if you're retired or you're nearing retirement and you need safety in your portfolio, you are not going to get it from bonds. You are going to lose money in bonds. So how do we substitute, how do we get you a bond alternative in the safe money circle? You do it through the index annuity using these caps, the 4.5 to 5% caps with no downside problem, and you just substitute that for your bond portfolio. You still have whatever percent, whatever percentage money you have over on risk that you want to have. You substitute this for the index annuity for this amount, and you weather the storm, right? So what to do in a rising interest rate environment? You use the index annuity to weather the storm. Again, what's the storm? The storm is a bear bond market that's coming that we basically started two and a half, three months ago in May, and here we are in August. Okay, hope this makes sense, and uh, thanks for watching.